Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry out repair on my uh, heat shield here. Um, if you watched the video where I replaced the cam chain tensioners on this bike, you will remember that um, I found a little bit of corrosion on the inside. Well, I'll put a little clip of it uh, up right now. Um, and yeah, as I said, there was a little bit of corrosion inside and obviously that's been on my mind and I don't want it to just completely rot out and have to be replaced. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to repair it now while, uh, while it's still um, not too bad. Okay, so what I've got to do first is um, obviously remove the heat shield from the bike. So uh, let's, uh, let's crack on and uh, start the job. Okay, what I'm going to do in order to treat the rust that's on this uh, panel is I'm going to use uh, another built Hamber product called Hydrate 80. Now, um, I've done a previous video um, using one of their rust eaters called Deoxy. Um, I'll put a link at the top uh, in the top corner right now so you can uh, go and have a look at that. And as you, if you if you watch that, you'll see that it's absolutely phenomenal at ru uh, rust removal. What this does is it's a um, it's a it basically stops rust in its tracks. It does. Uh, it does convert it to uh, a paintable um, surface so you can then uh, slap paint on there and you should be good should be good um, for, uh, for for many years to come without um, having to worry about it anymore so what I'll do I'll get the part off and then um, clean it up and then we'll have a look at what we're going to be doing with this so yeah um, what I need to do first is obviously remove the foot rests as as I did when I did the cam chain tensioner video Let's get them off first. Obviously, I did lock tight these, so they were quite tight. There's no way they were going to wind themselves out by by accident. There we go. What we'll do, we'll clean all that off before we refit it. Yeah, what we were, what we want to do is um, clean all this old Loctite off, and I'll run a, I'll run a tap down the threads to get all the old stuff out. Right, next is a little bolt at the top there, eight mil. Okay, now these two bolts here that hold the the brake master cylinder, um, where well, it's basically sandwiched between the foot hanger and the uh, and the plate on the back of these two nuts, there is a little there are little nuts that need to be removed. So what I'm going to do, put a spanner on the back when I get the right size. I think I thought it was eight. I think there might be ten. Yep, 10 mil, and that one. That's one cracked off. And two. Wind these bolts out. Nut. The, nut. the other nut. Give it a little wiggle out. That's a bit awkward. And there we go. Okay, 
these little captive spacers sit in like so, so we can pop them out. And there's little rubber, little rubber grommets on all of these holes, so we can uh, we can pop them out and put them to one side as well. Right, so there you go. As you can see, it is quite corroded, and significantly so on the inside. And it's only a matter of time before that blooms through, and we're left with big gaping holes in it. And believe it or not, these are ridiculously expensive for what is essentially just a piece of pressed steel. So any pre any preventative maintenance that we can carry out to this now is going to be welcomed. What I have seen before in the past, some people um, have actually just completely removed it and simply polished up these pipes so that they look really, really nice and shiny. And that's that's quite you know that's that's good if you if you want to do that. Um, it looks uh, it looks okay. Um, but uh, I would rather I would rather fix this uh, than go to those to those lengths because polishing these is not going to be a quick and easy job. This will be a lot simpler. So that's what I'm going to do. Right. Okay. That's all we need to do with the bike at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the um, Hydrate 80 and let's have a look at the uh, the instructions for that. Okay. So application instructions for the Hydrate 80. Um, Remove loose rust or scale with a wire brush, abrasive paper, sander or grinder, and then degrease thoroughly. So first step is to give this a bloody good clean and get as much rust off as we can, just using a uh, just using a wire brush. Uh, I've got a wire brush. Let's give it a good go. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these little grommets and their corresponding washers first. because I am going to be giving this a lick of paint later. Okay, so there we are, we're ready to go. So what I'll do, I'll grab my wire brush, give this a good good scrub, best I can, getting rid of all of this, basically, um, as as well as I can get it, you're just using the wire brush, and then the Hydrate 80 will do its thing and get rid of what I couldn't get rid of. It basically will neutralize the rust and uh, give me a good, a good surface for painting. So let me go grab the wire brush and let's crack on with that. Right then, what I've got here, I've got my drill and I've got a um, uh, abrasive brush. I say abrasive. It's um, it's these are like nylon, um, so they'll they'll do a good job of getting rid of the rust, but they won't be so bad that it's starting to dig into the actual material itself. So, what I'm going to do is just. I think we've uh I think we're there. Yeah, okay, I think we're uh, I think we're there, we've got pretty much all the loose stuff off. Right then. Okay, let's follow the instructions. So Degrease thoroughly. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab some brake cleaner and some wipes, give it a good clean off, and then uh, we'll follow the next step. Right then, use a bit of brake cleaner. As good as anything as a solvent. Obviously, you can get proper paint prep uh, degreases, but. Brake clean as well, I've got lying around in the garage. So I'm gonna use that. And as it's a solvent, it does evaporate by itself. It doesn't really leave any horrible residue behind. And there we go. Give the floor a quick wipe. Right then. Next step. Wash air with clean water and allow to dry or dry with a paper towel. So what I'll do, I'll go and give it a quick rinse under the tap, give it a dry and then I'll bring it back in. 
Okay, let's dry it with a paper towel. Okay, and there we go, nice and dry. Next step, shake container vigorously and pour sufficient quantity into a non-metallic container. So I've got a non-metallic container and a brush. Apply a uniform coat to the surface, working the hydrate 80 well into any pitted areas. Ensure any exposed corners and edges are coated. Smooth coating by brushing in one direction, ensuring that no bubbles remain. Okay, so a dramatic colour change will occur. So uh, I, I believe this is like a grey colour. Um, let's crack it open and have a look inside. Yeah, it's like a, a weird pale grey colour. When it, um, when it does its job of converting rust, I think it goes like a really deep black. Um, and that's it basically, done its job. Um, wait for 20 to 30 minutes and then apply a second light uniform coat at 90 degrees uh, to the first coat. Um, and uh, then you're gonna wait 24 hours. So what I need to do first is pour some of this into my non-metallic container. I reckon that'll be enough for the moment. If we need any more, we can always pour some more out. Now I need to do both sides. So what I'll do, I'll start on the inside because that is actually the worst the worst affected area. And then I'm just painting it on, ensuring that I get everywhere. And I'm only going in one direction as it's suggested in the instructions. Try and get rid of as many of these bubbles as it's um, as I can. As it, again, as it said in the instructions. As you can see, it's already starting to change. It's going like a weird blue colour. Right, that's that whole whole of that side giving a good uniform coat. Now what it said I need to do is leave it 20 to 30 minutes and then put another coat on at 90 degrees. So this time I'll be going this way. And then uh, once I've done that, I've got to leave it 24 hours to fully to fully cure off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave it the 20 minutes and then I'm going to turn it over and do the other side, leave it another 20 minutes and then 
I'll do my 90 degree. So what I'll do, I'll um, do the other side uh, in this manner, and then I'll bring you back in when I'm going to uh, when I'm going to do the 90 degrees to this side. Right. Okay. So it's been 20 to 30 minutes. In fact, it's been about 35. And as you can see, it's got a it's got a totally different colour. The stuff. It's not grey anymore. It's like a weird blue. So what it wants me to do now is apply a second light uniform coat at 90 degrees to the first coat. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to start off on this side. Okay. So this last time I went that direction. So this time I'm going to go this way. And it said a light coat, so I'm not going to go too mental with it. Go. Light coat complete. Right, let's tip it over. And do the same this side. Okay, there we go, and that's the second coat done. Right, now what it wants me to do is leave for 24 hours, after which uh, after which time paint can be applied. Always test your intended paint system at school scale first. Um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do, leave this 24 hours, it'll, uh, it'll completely cure, and then we'll um, all the rust will be neutralized and we'll be ready to stick some paint on it. What I'm gonna use is some uh, stove paint. Um, it's the kind of stuff you would spray on barbecues and all that sort of, uh, sort of thing. Uh, and it's like a matte finish and that would be perfect for this because that's the kind of finish that it was before it went rusty So yeah, I'm gonna leave this 24 hours and we'll uh, we'll have a look at it tomorrow Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. Okay, uh, as I said earlier um, The hydrate 80 required 24 hours um, in which to cure It's actually been um, Just over a week as it goes because work commitments go in the way So it's had plenty of time to cure and as you can see now um it's gone this really weird, uh, almost satin black colour. Um, but what it should have done is neutralised all of this corrosion. This should this corrosion should um, basically halt it in its tracks. And now it's ready to paint. So in order to paint, what I've got is I've got high temperature stove paint. Um, this is, as you can see, for wood burners, barbecues and stoves, and it's heat resistant, heat resistant up to 600, uh, 600 degrees, and it's a, a matte black finish, so 600 degrees is going to be more than enough um, for this little heat shield. 
Um, and yeah, a matte black finish is kind of the effect that I want. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get uh, get my mask on, and we'll uh, we'll have a look at laying uh, laying some paint down. Okay, so what I've done, uh, this is an old coat hanger. I've just hung it from the rafters of the garage. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this side first, then I'll turn it round and paint the other side. Um, I'm going to put my mask on just to uh, just to be sure, because um, I don't know. I don't know uh, what this stuff's like if you breathe it in, and I don't particularly want to find out. So let's get all masked up. Okay. Right then, let's have a look at the uh, the direction. Spread it over the current room temperature. Right, shake the can side to side. So let's give it a good shake. Yeah, as you can see, if I'd have left this much longer, all of that all of that rust would have bloomed through, and I'd have been looking at a new uh, a new panel. And if you've ever tried to find one of these from a dealer, you'll know how expensive they are. It's absolutely ridiculous. So uh, I think I caught this one just in time, and uh, hopefully it should uh, it should last a fair amount of time from now. So what I'll do. I'll give it a good liberal wet coat on both sides and then I'll leave it another 24 hours as the can says to set and then we should be uh, in a good position to be able to put it back on the bike okay right right then let's get on with it Right then, I think that's a good, uh, a good liberal coat on that side. What I'm going to do, I'm going to spin it round and do the other side. One thing I will point out is that this nozzle is incredibly difficult to press down. With your thumb, it's so so hard. So that's why I was having to, I was having to press down on it from the top. So let me spin it round. Okay, and there we are, we have a, another good thick coat. As you can see, it's obviously quite messy. I ain't no painter, that'll, uh, that'll happily admit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that now for another 24 hours, and then uh, tomorrow I'll come back, and if it needs another coat, I'll give it another coat. Hopefully that'll, uh, that'll do though. Um, so, let me take the mask off. Oh. There we are. So yeah, what I'll do, I'll bring it back tomorrow and we'll have another look at uh, uh, how it's um, how it's dried. Okay, right, welcome back. Now, um, last you saw, I gave this a coat of paint. What I did was um, I left it for 24 hours and then thought I'd give it another coat. So I gave it another coat and it's now been, uh, it's actually been about three days since um, since I put the first layer of paint on. Um, it's now fully dry, it's, um, it's okay. Is the finish perfect? No, I'm not a painter. Um, you can still see it's a bit uh, rough where, where the corrosion used to be, um, but you know that's not the aim of the game here. The aim of the game really is to neutralize the corrosion and put a protective layer on uh, and prevent it blooming again in the future, hopefully. 
Um, anyway, uh, what I'm going to do now is obviously fit it back to the bike. So let's um, start by getting the little uh, the little rubber grommets into each of the little holes, just like so. Yeah, there's like a little groove in the middle of each one that just needs slotting in. And there we go, right. So we've got three bolts that hold the heat shield on. Um, one goes through that hole there into this captive nut, and then the other two go um, through the master cylinder into these into these two holes and then that in turn is held to the bike by the rear set so it's all um, like locked together so there's um a couple of different uh components to each one you've got like this little top hat which sits inside there like so and again there and the same for the top one like so, okay, that's everything we need to do so far. Now let's uh, let's fit it onto the bike. Right then, so let's uh, let's get it back onto the bike. Now it is quite awkward to get her in, but oh, actually it fell in uh, on this occasion. But uh, yeah, it can be uh, it can be a bit of a pain um, to get on, but it was okay on this on this occasion. Right now. And, for me, this is the uh, the brake light switch, um, and it basically hooks onto onto there like that. Um, it's gone loose because the uh, the rear set's not in its usual position. But what I'll do, I'll leave that hanging down there for now, um, and then I'll sort that out after. What I need to do is get access to the back of the plate because I need to align this hole here. Sorry, these two holes with the brake master cylinder, and then. Pop a bolt through. Just like so. And then pop it through the plate. Just like that, right. Next, a washer on each one. And then a nut. One, wash out. and the nut. Not a lot of room in here, but especially we've got big hands like I have. Come on. Nip up. And there we are, stage one done. Right then, before I uh, fix the last bolt up here and secure the plate, what I need to do is obviously route this. Now, if you look down here, you see this little ring. This goes down and sits in that ring. Just like so. Then the spring just hooks on just like that. And there we go. And that's the uh, that's the brake switch back in its place. And we're all good. Okay, now next last little bolt up here. Give it a little 
wiggle. And then we'll tighten that one up, which I think is an eight. Correct. Eight mil bolt. And there we go, right. So that's, that's all of them done. All I need to do now is the two bolts for the rear set. A little bit of Loctite on these wouldn't go amiss. Oop, spray it all over myself. Don't need to go crazy with this stuff. This is the blue stuff. It's not, um, it's not overly, uh, overly strong, but it's strong enough to stop them vibrating out. Right, these do have a torque figure in the book, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go check the manual, find out what the torque figure is, and then we'll uh, get the torque wrench out. Right, I've checked the manual, and the torque figure for these is 32 newton meters. One, two, let's just double check. Yeah, happy days, right. There we are. All good, all secure, brake switch is all connected up, and happy days. Right, um, there you go, nothing nothing too strenuous, just a little bit of uh, spray paint out of a rattle can, uh, barbecue paint. Hopefully that'll um, that'll do the job, as, as you saw, obviously we treated all the rust, and um, hopefully stopped it dead in its tracks. Um, only time will tell, obviously. I do ride this bike during the winter, um i don't uh i don't i don't i'm not too precious about this one i don't mind getting this one out in all weathers um so yeah we'll uh we'll keep an eye on it if it does rust out again then obviously i'll replace it it's uh it's one of those things but i don't want to spend money on something that i could probably um recover if uh if i if i can so yeah um uh, hopefully you uh found this video um entertaining helpful useful in any way um if you did then by all means leave a comment below and um, i'll do my uh, i'll do my best to reply to you um, don't forget to uh, subscribe and uh, hit that um, like button and I'll see you all again for the very next video. Thank you very much guys. Bye bye now.